Good afternoon. Lane Kippen is in his fifth season at the University of Mississippi and has led the Rebels to four consecutive bowl berths, including two in the New Year's Six group. Finished last year with 11-2 overall record, including a Peach Bowl victory over Penn State. There are two head coaches in the history at Ole Miss who have had multiple 10-win seasons, Johnny Vaught and Lane Kippen. Lane has become an avid pickleball player. Lane is the only person I know who's not injured himself playing pickleball. He's organized a 64-person March Madness style tournament at Ole Miss for the football staff and others. He competes with his fellow football coaches in what is called the SPL, the Staff Pickleball League. They use the same naming agency as the college football playoff. Just keep it basic. That happens at noon each day. Lane has sent me pictures of his fishing experiences over the years, sent me one from a hot yoga class, but he's never sent me a photo from his pickleball tournaments. Uh, I do want to take a moment before I invite Lane up here to talk about his football team to recognize the loss that he and his family have experienced with the passing of Monty Kiffin. I first met Monty in the SEC office when Lane and Monty were at Tennessee. Monty worked with Lane in four settings, Tennessee, Southern Cal, Florida Atlantic, at Ole Miss. I was invited in by Mike's Live to sit around a table and watch Mike and Monty just tell stories about who they both knew in college football. And I think that is a sign of respect that Monty Earn is one of the greatest coaches recognized in football, certainly greatest assistant, one of the greatest assistant coaches at the NFL level where he worked for 29 years particularly noted for the Tampa 2 defense. On the college level, people will forget, he also coached at NC State, Arkansas, and Nebraska. I've asked Lane if he would, and I, I mean this with the greatest respect because we all share our sympathies and condolences with, with him, if he would begin by just addressing his dad, maybe a story about Monty, and then to ask all of you if he could then go back to being the head football coach at Ole Miss, and you ask him and he converse about his team. We do, as a group in this league, honor and, and share those condolences and sympathy, sympathies with Lane. And I'd like to invite Lane Kiffin, the head football coach at Ole Miss, to the podium. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, really grateful and thankful to so many people that have supported this challenging week um, from all over the country, especially Oxford and, and Ole Miss community and, and church yesterday and even Pastor Fish afterwards coming over uh, with myself and mom was really special. And um, it's just, it's been an amazing outpouring of support, of stories um, from former players, former coaches, and especially former staff of people in the building and how many friends came out of that and, and the Bucks community and, and family. So <clears throat> in my opinion, it's not really the place or the time um, to go into a lot on this. You know, that'll be Saturday in Tampa and you know, so I'll just say one thing. Um, I've talked before about being my hero. I had a high school neighborhood friend, really middle school friend, and he said hero's not really the right term for him. It's superhero. To, and that's <clears throat> what he was to the people that he touched. And, and he used this term, and now I'm using this term in description of him because I really feel like you know, there's very few superheroes and very few great ones that, you know, loved everyone and tried to help everyone they came in touch with forever. Whether you were big or small, wherever you were, he tried to help. And um, one person said, you know, which I think is telling for those that you don't know him, and I thought this was very descriptive. And 
He said, I met him in a gas station, and although he was a stranger to me, he made me feel like a friend, and that was him. So um, he'd never want anybody to have a bad day or be sad, so this is me trying to do that, and I appreciate everything, and there's already been a lot of questions about it, so I understand that. I'm appreciative of that, but um, as he would say, you know, he had his first rule when he put on the chalkboard back in the day was to all players and coaches was to show up. First rule of getting better is you got to show up, and so um, show up and do your job, and that's what I'm trying to do here. And so moving into the season, you know, this is a really has been an exciting time at Ole Miss, and going back to the near six bowl and, and the peach bowl and that win and so many players deciding to stay after that to come back for another season and then the addition a lot of credit to those players um, and staff obviously but those players of additions through the portal of other players free agency and um, you know it's set up for a chance to have a good team but there's a lot of work in that there's plenty of you know, noise out there that means nothing. And plenty of teams over years in all sports have been ranked high and haven't played well and been ranked low and, and played really well. So none of that means anything. I just very appreciative to Coach Saban who called the other day and then just stopped me and talked to me there. So kind of in respects to Coach Saban's terms, you know, this is really, as he said, this is, an, a, this is a rat poison situation here. Um, to have all this attention on our players, and it means nothing because it's all about the work that they put in, the process that they do daily. Uh, they're working extremely hard this summer, and then we're going to have a lot of work to do in training camp. It's not just your typical, normal, as always, X's and O's in development of that, but they got to come together because as you look over time, look in professional sports, there's plenty of teams that we're supposed to be good or added these great free agent teams and they've come together, you know, all these free agents and then they don't gel and they don't play together. And in this sport, especially with all three phases, you know, there's a lot of, it's the ultimate team sport. So there's a ton of work to do on the field and off the field for us to, to perform well. So um, I think the schedule is very exciting. Um, I, I just said in the last interview, uh, I am in this area, probably not in a lot. You wouldn't consider me a traditionalist, but in the conferences and the divisions, I, I am. But it is what it is, and there's some excitement in that, that the fans get to go to places they're not used to and, and the players. So uh, we have a very challenging schedule, home and away, and very hard places to play, some of the hardest places in the country. So um, we're going to have a lot of work to do. All right, thank you, Coach. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll grant Dylan or Dinah to you with a microphone. Uh, we're going to start, Coach, straight down the middle aisle, about three quarters of the way back, right in front. Uh, hey, Coach, Mike Griffith, AJC Dog Nation. You mentioned the team element. Can you talk about some of the team building that you've done and how you've modified that with the number of transfers coming into your program? Yeah, I think in a, in a way, you know, <clears throat> we've kind of had some examples to learn from. You know, we've done what is considered out there well in the portal for a number of years now. And two years ago, I think we were 8-1 and one or something, playing Coach Saban and had the ball going down to score at home. And if we score, you know, in the red zone on the last drive, we're going to 9-1 and one and, um, and then fall apart and don't play well. And, and I, think, I think lose last four or five or something. Then last year, you know, go 11-2 and two and play really well with a lot of portal-heavy players. So in that is what I'm, I've said for years now, which I think there's so much of that bonding and them coming together, you know, or else everybody just say, oh, just go get a top portal team. Go get the top free agency team in the NBA. That doesn't always work. I think that, more than anything, shows in the NBA, and this is a sport that it takes a lot more players to play. So... I do think there's a good mixture of it is portal. There's a lot of really good portal players, but you have so many players coming back 
which we didn't have two seasons ago, that know our expectations, know we, how we want things done, and know what our culture is. So that, that certainly helps. And three of them are here today uh, that came back, um, you know, instead of going to the NFL and understand how we do things. Coach, we'll go over to our, our right-hand side over on the far aisle, over to the right. Hey, Lane, Jared Redding, Inside of the Rebels on 24-7 Sports. I was wondering if I could get your thoughts on the rule change a couple of weeks ago regarding countable coaches on the field, opening up the door for analysts to be more involved in coaching and whatnot, and especially after adding Zach Arnett and Joe Judge to the staff. Um, <clears throat> I, I think that that's probably good. Um, you know that, you know, everybody has the opportunity now and, and, and I guess when I think of decisions to make, I usually look to the NFL because they've been doing it for a long time. They have things nailed. They, to me, usually in this free agency portal and things I've said about too many windows and, you know, not having real contracts and all that, I've always kind of alluded to the NFL has got it figured out. And so I think in this instance, you know, there is an accountable coach there and there isn't somebody that can coach, you know, but then can't run the film or can't, can hold a card, but can't really coach, can't have a headset, all that stuff. So I think I, I would defer to that, that that's a good system in the NFL. And now we have that uh, in college. So I think obviously, you know, through the process, there was some argument of, well, smaller schools, now the bigger schools will have bigger staffs and, you know, kind of raid smaller schools. And I understand that from that perspective. But at the same time, too, they're getting opportunities now at the bigger schools where a lot of times they were coming anyway, and now they can, they can do all the coaching um, responsibilities and further their career. Coach, we'll go over to our left over here on this far aisle. Uh, good morning, Coach Kippen. Uh, can you talk about Jackson Dart? You've had a long history of developing quarterbacks at a high level. Uh, he performed well last year with only five interceptions and over 3,300 yards. What kind of things this offseason have you guys talked about for him to take the next level as a quarterback and maybe jump into that top two or three in the conference? Yeah, I think we're always trying to improve players, obviously. I think that with Jackson, there's not as much to point to because he did finish the season really well, and we've had him now for a while. And um, a lot of times we got to go work on leadership things with someone and investing into their team and players. And he's in honor of this game coming out that everybody's so excited, including Knox, because there's a party tonight to play this game, whatever. It makes me think of if they had a rating of like, which maybe they do, of leadership of a quarterback, he would be a 99, you know? Um, because he invests into the players so much. So a lot of times you gotta work on that with them. He has that nailed. So I think just continuing of his decision making and then no matter how grounded you are, the spotlight gets big and the pressure gets big of him maintaining what he did really well at the end of the year, which is why we're so successful, which is taking care of the football and not forcing balls and, and making really good decisions. Which will go straight down that center aisle again, uh, about three quarters of the way back. Coach, uh, Anthony Dasher from UJ Sports. How much did uh, last year's Georgia game impact the way you tried to um, attack the portal this year? You know, I, I think that, I, I guess I said it after the game, you know, um, we've got to recruit better. And that was not a shot towards our players because I hate that when it's like, oh, well, the coach is saying, I said, we got to coach better, but we as coaches got to, recruit better even in our thinking of evaluations and so forth. And um, one of the big things was I just thought, which had happened in a few games here over our time here, um, really with Alabama and Georgia, was there there was a length and size issue, you know, both Kirby and Coach Saban. I mean, you learn from Coach Saban, like there's an exact profile they recruit to of size. Now that's not always easy to do everywhere. Everybody would love to have every player, you know, 6-5, but I do think that we addressed that, and I do think that game, and that was glaring, and again, we got to perform really well, we got to practice really well and coach really well, but we're going to look better coming off the bus, I guess, so 
uh, will have more length and size. Coach, we'll stay right there in front of you to the section to your right. Coach, Hunter Dawkins with the Gazebo Gazette and Super Talk Media News. Um, you spoke earlier about the potential problem with the transfer portal, depending on what you have and what you come with. How important is it to you that you guys recruit at a high school level or a junior college level? Because both of those, obviously, in Mississippi are pretty strong. Yeah, I think it's really critical um, to have a really good balance. And I think that for us, the way that we do it, that changes every year. I don't, I don't think the right way in the evolving college football landscape of recruiting and portal changes and windows and now multiple transfers, I think you can't be stuck and say, well, we're not going to take any or we're only going to take this many percent of high school, this much of portal, like you'll get stuck because you got to do just like you would in the free agency in the NFL. There's some years you sign more, there's some years you sign less. You know, you lose some sometimes now. Uh, some guys come back and don't go to the NFL that maybe you thought were. So we're always evolving in that. We're going to try to sign the best players, um, but we're also going to really look at who they are because, I mean, you guys see it, just study. The answer isn't just be the best portal classes because there's some really good high school signing classes and some really good portal classes and, you know, they didn't have great seasons. There's a lot to that too in the right makeup of the guys um, that you signed. So especially in the portal to me, I think you got to be really careful and really good job of evaluating who they are, why they left, where they left, what do they want to do. Um, so that when you do hit some tough times that they are the right type of players that are there um, to help themselves, but to help the team also. And I think you've seen some programs where that hasn't been the case in the last two years. Coach, we're gonna go over here to our left-hand side on this near aisle. Hey coach, Chris Phillips, SEC Unfilter. You added Pooh Paul Jr. out of the transfer port of the linebacker spot. Just talk about what you've seen from him to this point and what you're expecting from him, not just as a player, but as a leader as well for your defense. Yeah, I think that's, now that we are like the NFL when it comes to free agency and all this, um, I think that was a similar to what happens a lot in the NFL. You know, you play against somebody and then they, they go, they're up for free agency that year and their arrival, and so you seem, feel like you know him well, especially as an offensive head coach, going against him, playing him, then he got injured later in our game, we were able to run the ball a lot better when he was out, and just seeing his impact, so when he became available in free agency, you know, um, we already knew about him that way, so we're really glad to have him. Coach, we'll go in the section right in front of you to the right, second row. Coach Kiffin, thank you for being here. Um, you and Coach Sarkeesian share a similar past. You're quarterbacks, coached at USC. You coached under Nick Saban at Alabama. As Texas comes into the SEC, what challenges do they face? And are, like everyone's talking about, are they real contenders like what people see? But from a coaching perspective, do they have a real serious chance at going pretty high this season? Yeah, I mean, they were in the Final Four last year, and a lot of players coming back and added, continue to add great high school players and portal players. So um, I, th I think they're one of the elite rosters in America. So I, I don't, you know, Sark would know well the challenges, so it's not like he's coming to, with a team in the SEC that with a coach that hasn't been. So I think he understands that, and um, that conference was competitive too, so he had tough games there and tough places to play on the road there. Um, this is just, it's just different. And the SEC is really challenging. And I mean, study, study road records and study road records at night in the SEC. And why do those percentages change? They percentage because they're really good players, but they're really hard places to play with electric atmospheres that are challenging um, to play in. So you, you just if you come in this conference, you get that more. Okay, Coach, we'll go right in front of me, uh, right here in the front row. Tom. 
Hey, Lane, Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat. I said, wanted to follow up on the Chris Paul question. What you saw from the, him in the spring, what role he might play for you. And it's part two, you've had four pretty wild games against Arkansas. Just maybe your thoughts on, you know, what that rivalry has been like with Sam Pittman teams. Yeah, that has been um, a rivalry that continues with this change in a division. So I guess for the next two seasons at least, um, which is exciting. I, as I said in that previous interview, when they talked about the no more divisions, and obviously we understand why that was done, but um, there's some really cool rivalries that don't take place now. And um, whether that's people changing conferences that don't take place, that have taken place for a long time, but even within the conferences. And so as you allude to that, that's, that's exciting that they're still on there because it have been extremely competitive games. Um, you know, two very passionate fan bases. And um, so I'm glad they're still on there from a standpoint of, you know, keeping some tradition of who we play every year. Hey, Coach, we'll stay in the same section just on the other side of the aisle. Coach, it's right here. It's right there. Kevin Sherrington, Dallas Morning News. Um, you commented on what the challenges would be for Texas um, coming to the SEC. I just wonder what your thoughts are personally about the Texas and Oklahoma both coming to the SEC and what do you think that does for the league, uh, if anything? Well, I think the co commissioner has done an amazing job. That was actually in my notes to say to thank him, um, you know, for how he continues to push our conference as the elite conference in college football. And then I got a little flustered there, as maybe you could imagine, and forgot to say that. Um, so that, that's just really exciting. To, you know, you talk about two of the top programs in the history of college football. And then as I look at things too, like I said earlier, places that are really hard to play. And then you get these night games filtered in and places get really hard to play with fan bases. Um, like Oklahoma and Texas. So that, that's really exciting for the, con for the conference and um, continues to kind of elevate the super conference. Which we'll go back over to our far right-hand side. Far right. Lane, uh, John Sokoloff with uh, WCBI. Obviously with Ole Miss, you've, you've done a good job of getting a lot of rushing yards with, with your teams in the past couple of years. How confident are you that you guys will be able to kind of fill the void of, of Quinn Sean Junkins when you consider the guys that you've brought in from the portal, who you have on the roster at running back, and et cetera. Well, Quinn Sean's a great player, one of the best players in all of college football. And um, as we alluded to earlier, we're in an NFL world where it's not like, yo, you just go to the portal and you get everybody and nobody comes and gets your guys. I mean, it's free agency. And um, so we wish him the best. That's very hard to replace. Uh, we have a number of guys that we're excited about, some that have some health issues that we're going to have to work through, through training camp and even into the season. Um, and we're just always going to try to find the best way to win. And for those of you that have covered our teams over the years or even our offenses at places over the years, that can look very different year to year. You know, um, if you go back even to Alabama, those three offenses look very different. So... Um, I don't know. We'll find out what that is, and um, we'll always evolve as coaches to work our offense and our systems around the players so that we perform the best to win the most games, even if that doesn't look the same. Coach, we'll go straight down the middle aisle, about four rows back. Coach Kiffin, Emily Grace, McCorder from the next round. You've used the term route poison a lot in these last few weeks. Realistically, in a time where your players and staff can see what is being said about them on social media, how do you realistically contain that in your program over the next month? Yeah, I don't know that you completely contain it. You just continue to talk about it and kind of like in parenting, you just continue to hit on it and hope that it sticks. Um, and I mean, on the plane ride down here with the three of them, uh, just continue to remind them about that. You know, um, that doesn't mean anything, you know, and nowadays it's harder, as you mentioned, because it's coming to their phones all day long and how great they are, or you're not ranked here and you're supposed to be ranked here as the receiver or any of that stuff. And just continue to remind, I get it. 
We're all humans, like you read stuff, it starts to, you start to believe it when you see it enough, but you just gotta continue to remind them that really means nothing. It really doesn't. Okay, we'll go straight in front of me here on the near aisle. We have a question in this area, right there, Brent. Brent Barry. Yeah, Lane, Barry Trammell with the Tulsa World. Well, you and Texas are excited to be here. The conference seems excited to have them. But as the coach of a program that's really built up and gotten near the top, does this just make your job that much tougher? Um, yeah, I think that's fair. You know, um, it, it does make it more challenging if you bring in two, you know, national traditional powers of Heisman's and stadium size and tradition. Um, yeah, that makes our jobs more challenging, but um, I'm not a money numbers guy. I'm sure that there obviously was an impact there that makes all these pro all our programs uh, better off financially. So I see our players all the time, and no matter what it is in life, whether it seems good or bad, there's an opposite to it. There's a cost and there's a benefit, or there's a benefit to it, but there's going to come a cost, and I think that's an example of that. Um, it's awesome in a lot of areas, but it's harder to win when you add those two those two teams. So, um, but probably in the end, it just makes us all better. Coach, we'll take one final question in the section right in front of me, about halfway back. Hey, Coach, uh, Steve Bolton, WZZN out of Huntsville, Alabama. Appreciate you being here. Uh, I was hoping you could speak to your defense and sp specifically your secondary and what kind of value has Coach Neighbors brought to your coaching staff? Yeah, Coach Neighbors has done a great job. I um, was familiar with him from he was at Alabama when I was on Coach Saban's staff there, and then we brought him to FAU and then here. Um, and he does a great job. I'm, I'm excited about our defense, you know, because there's so many, a lot more new parts on defense and offense. So um, it's just excited to see them play together and how we're going to use them exactly because um, there's some really unique players that we added in there. Coach Kiffin, thank you for your time today. All right, guys, thank you. Have a good week.